Thanks for coming. It's interesting. I know the first game was a bit tough. Sorry, it's my mistake. I'll find a better game next time. Okay, so for this exercise, we're going to learn Java programming. So the basics of Java. So at the end of this, you can get a kind of look at feel of what an actual programming language is. And and also like how to create a very simple basic program. So if we begin, we ask what is Java? Oh, if you see that logo over there, like in the middle here, that's actually the logo for Java. So Java is basically a programming language. So what, what do we mean by programming language? So if you have a uh, a device that's got computing power. That means it's got like a processor, like your, your PCs, your laptop, your phone, and whatever. They can do actually nothing if you do not have a code to run on it. So in today, for example, people build apps. So in order to build an app, you need a programming language to build the app kind of thing. So one of, the, one of those uh, programming languages that people use in today is Java. So Java is a platform independent language, meaning it, that Java can run on any, any operating system. Whether you run a Mac, Windows, or Linux, or something similar, your Java code will run on those machines. You don't need to configure it to run specifically to Windows. You don't need to worry to how to run it on a Mac. If you install Java, it will run on those machines. And about 3 billion devices run Java. So like your, your smartphone, I don't, if you are on iPhone, you don't run Java because that's, Apple is on another level. But your smartphone, your Blu-ray player, your, if you got, uh, if you got cars now with touch screens, they run Java. So, Almost every technology today has Java. So the washing machine nowadays, even that has Java. So Java was started in 19, was released in 1995 by a company called Sun. So the logo for Sun is that one over there. And then they got bought out by Oracle. The logo is over there. So now Sun is owned by Oracle. So if you want to go download Sun, you usually go to Oracle and go get Java from there. So how it works is you write your code, and then you save it into a file with any with .java. And then once you're done writing your code, you actually build it into what we call bytecode. So it creates a file called a class file. So using a JDK, using a compiler, and then to run Java on any platform, there's a thing called a virtual machine. So a virtual machine is basically another kind of layer that sits on top of your OS that can be able to run your code to all kinds of platforms without you having to worry about how to talk to that operating system or how to talk to that platform. So that's basically how Java kind of works. OK. so. To, to run Java, you need at least a virtual machine. So most, most programs nowadays run, run Java, but internally they have a virtual machine somewhere that runs your code. So if you write a Java program, make sure that you have a virtual machine running to run it. So yeah, that's basically it. And because now the virtual machine runs your code, I can write. I can write my code in Windows, and then you are running it on a Mac. I can give you the same code, and then you can run it on a Mac. So you don't need to worry about, oh, uh, this, this does not run in a Mac or whatever. It will always work. And then Android. Android also is the operating system is owned by Google. so. If you got a smartphone that's got Android and it's not iPhone, 
is basically an operating system owned by Google. Now, the user interface, the, the one where you actually move up and down, you scroll for apps and whatever, your settings and whatever, all of that was written in Java. So you already see how popular Java is. So like I said earlier, Android run, like Java, you need a virtual machine. Android does the exact same thing. It's got a virtual machine called the Android Runtime. So if you write an app for your, for your, for your smartphone, for example, if you run your app for a Samsung, that app can also run on a Huawei phone because there's a virtual machine that take, take the same code and knows how to run it on a Huawei phone. So you don't have to write specific pro app that's only for Samsung or specific for Huawei. For example, Instagram. Instagram runs on almost every Android phone out there. The only reason they can do that because they can write it in Java and then the virtual machine knows how to run it on every other phone. And if you want to know the latest version of uh, Android, you just have to ask what's the name of Android and the name is always named after food. So like Android Pie is the latest version, which is version nine, but it's named after the Pie. So every version c comes after food. So the next one, which is version 10, will have a name of a food somewhere. So that's how you, there was an Android called KitKat after the chocolate. So yeah. So there's over 400 plus devices, different type of devices that runs Android, but it's actually way more because you, you have, if you now include cars and you include smartphones and you include Blu-ray players, and you, it's probably over millions. Yeah, fridge, fridge TVs. T smart TVs. Actually, yeah, your Android smart TV is Java. So Netflix, the app Netflix is also written in Java. So almost all the apps on your phone is Java-based. And the biggest manufacturers are Samsung, Huawei, Google, Sony. I forgot, there's also LG, there's also Oppo, so, hmm? Hisense. Hisense. Does Hisense sell phones here? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes they do. I don't know Hisense sell phones. <laughs> really? I didn't know that. See, I'm disappointed Sony left SA, so I can't get Sony. So, just to iterate, uh, Java is one of the most popular languages in the world. So, any country in the world, you'll probably find a Java developer somewhere. I write code in Java, actually. So, it's easier to code, because back in the day, if you, if you had to write code, like for example, in C or Delphi and whatever. This is a bit more technical. You have to do memory management. So if you're gonna use like an array, for example, you have to create the size of the array. You have to know what, how much memory you're gonna use, fill the data and clear it. Otherwise you will have issues. So Java does, you don't need to worry about it. You just write your code. The JVM knows how to handle it. And then obviously there's a bigger community and almost all your devices run Java. So if you want, for example, to write apps for African people, especially in Africa, in Africa most people use Android. So if you've got a good idea and you want to write an app for it and you want it to run mostly for African people, write it in Java. Okay, that's the brief summary of why, why we're gonna learn Java and why we chose Java and why Java is so popular. Okay. So in this exercise, we, ProGate came to us about last year sometime, or earlier this year, summer. So they found us and they decided, you know what? We've, we've got online courses in Java that you can try it out, and it's actually good for kids. They've actually launched it in a few African countries and, and is popular in some countries in Africa. So, we're going to use ProGate to actually learn how to do Java programming. So it's very basic. 
it, it will explain to you things like what an object is, uh, how, to, how to handle numbers, how to handle characters, and all of that stuff. So, but now you're all logged into ProGate. So if you're already in ProGate, we're gonna choose uh, Java. I know some of you study in HTML. Jeez, people are like 10 years ahead of me. So if you started with HTML, you will have to restart to and select Java. And then we'll, we'll just go through the basic exercises. And then we'll see how far we go. All right, let's begin. Yes. Yeah,